guys, welcome to Ocean Stories. Thank you for coming today. Um, I'm Ellen, I'll be your host today. Hopefully I can live up to uh, Jay's standards. Um, how's everybody doing today? Uh, today we have Matt joining us, but before we get started, um, just got a few updates. Uh, tomorrow we have Marta coming to talk to us about the secret life of sharks in Costa Rica. And then on the 23rd, um, we actually have Dora Sandoval, uh, one of the first females to own her own liveaboard company. Um, and she's coming to tell us about the inspiring story of the Heroes Del Mar project, um, where she's getting inner city kids involved in marine research on the high seas. So really, really, some really cool talks coming up. Uh, be sure to check out the uh, Ocean Story schedule for more um, courses coming up, uh, Project Aware conservation courses, Nitrox courses, and stuff like that. Um, those are being posted on the schedule as well. Um, so how are you today, Matt? Yeah, I'm good, Ellen. I'm really well, thank you very much. How are you? Good, good. Uh, so Matt is the founder of Ocean Culture Life, and um, I'll let him go ahead and tell you his story. So go ahead, Matt. All right, okay, here we go, sharing the screen. get this on here. Right, hi guys. Uh, this is exciting. I'm just going to I'm just going to move this uh, top part of my screen because it's in a weird spot. Right, and now I can't I'm going to get rid of this. Right, we're in action. Okay, hi guys, sorry about that. Um, Ellen and uh, Jay, thanks for getting me on board. This is, um, this is, this is exciting for me to be here. Um, I, you know, I've, I've spent the last few years being inspired by other people's stories and now it's my turn to uh, give my story back, which, is, uh, which has never been you know, on top of my agenda. That's why I'm always reaching out to hear other people's stories rather than tell my own. So uh, let's, um, let's dive into this. I want to talk about ocean culture life, uh, connecting an ocean community. Um, we are building a community to connect, inspire, and, um, and inspire positive change around the world. Okay, I want, to, uh, I want to introduce myself. I'm Matt Porteous, and I am from a little island called Jersey. If you look at the map, on the uh, on the on the left there, then uh, on the right on your screen, it's uh, Channel Islands. It's a it's a small group of islands. Uh, Jersey's nine miles by five. It is not New Jersey. New Jersey is uh, actually came from us. We're the small island. New Jersey came from us. But I was born. I was uh, brought up and I was raised on this um, on this beautiful island of Jersey. You know, we've, we've, uh, we've got some really good surf on the West Coast. We have open beaches and we are gifted with some dramatic um, cliff, cliffs and uh, dramatic coastline on the, on the North Coast. Uh, this is where I really um, understood the importance of um, community and culture. Uh, this is where I really kind of, this is where I learned to, uh, this is where I honed my skills as a photographer. When I was seven years old, I got my first underwater, um, my little underwater camera, it's a little Minolta camera. And uh, I remember, you know, these are the magical moments having when I was a child, is being dropped down the beach by my mum and just being left there all day, um, hanging out with the other surf kids, maybe not when I was seven, a little bit older, but when I was a teenager, just hanging out down the beach all day, um, sitting out in the water and just I remember just sitting there and just always being just amazed by the, the shape of the waves and the light and I saw everything coming in as so I spend more time watching rather than actually surfing. Um, I think that's, that's, part of the, then I, that's part of the reason I honed my, my, my kind of vision into, into the photography and started spending more time, spending more time in the water. So over the next, um, over the next few years, I would, I would go around and I would be photographing everything in the water in Jersey, would do some free diving on good days uh, when it was possible, it's not always that clear in Jersey, but it um, it really in you know really kind of like took me on a journey to where I would um, continue to where I am today. Um, 
over the last 10 years, I've been uh, running a commercial studio in Jersey. Uh, it's called the Studio M. And we have been focusing on the last on the last few years, we've been focusing quite heavily on documenting change makers. These are the people that are inspiring change and doing good things in the world. These are charities and um, these, are, these are charities that we've been working with um, at, at home in Jersey and around the world. Uh, we've also had the opportunity to work with some of the most respected change makers in the world, including the Royal Family. Uh, they have a people look up to um, people look up to the royal family and they look up to other people in, in power that have a really positive outlook on life and I think being able to connect with them and being able to tell their stories and then working your way down to the, the, the charities that we're working with to the people that they're looking after is something that's that's meant a lot to me and, and my studio um, over the last few years um, stories of how we learn how we inspire change and help to make a difference. Um, I think that that's something that really kind of, as a, as a photographer uh, and a, as a filmmaker, we have, um, we have the, the, the power to, to be able to capture a story and capture somebody's life and be able to share it. Um, so I feel very fortunate in, in the world that I'm in today to, um, get out and be able to capture these stories and then bring them back and be able to share it, um, share it with the world or share it with whoever's interested in, in looking at our stories. Life is not measured by the number of breaths that we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. That is a quote that I've loved from day one by uh, Maya Angelou. Um, she, that quote just, it's always stuck in my head and you'll always see it on my website. It's, it's a really beautiful quote. Uh, this image here was shot in Hawaii and that is where ocean culture life was born. It was born on the North coast. It was born on the North shore on Oahu. Um, when I visited there in 2016 for the El Nino season. Um, I went out there with the idea that I would go and shoot the surfers and go and capture the North Shore and get into some big waves and go out and, and pipeline. And, uh, you know, I, was just, I, I didn't really have an idea of what I was doing. I saw it as the El Nino season and I just booked a flight and, and left and went out there. Now, the first thing that I, I discovered as soon as I arrived on the North Shore was the community, but more importantly, were the lifeguards. And um, we arrived, I, when I arrived in Hawaii, it was, it was a big day. There was some big waves. So the first thing I did, I walked up to the lifeguards and I asked them, is it safe if I go in? And uh, he said, not today, it's not, it's not good today. I want you to come back tomorrow and ask me the same question. So I, did. I went back the next day and asked the same question. And it was then I was just, I took interest, I started taking more interest in the lifeguards and I wanted to hear a bit of their story. I jumped in the water and there's a picture here of, um, of Yosemito on a big wave at Pipeline. And the next day it was big. Uh, I think that was, that, that was actually the second day I'd been in the water. But uh, it, was, it was their journey. I just started seeing this. Um, I started seeing this culture on the North Shore that kind of resonated with my life back home. But I'd never really taken such a big interest in it. Um, you can see a picture down here with uh, all the there's surfers in the shot, there's photographers in the shot, uh, there are body surfers, there are lifeguards, they're all in that one picture down in the bottom corner there. Um, and that's the way it is every, every day in the, in the water when, uh, at Pipeline. And that's the thing you don't normally see. You normally see the cover shot or you see the odd photo from underwater, but I never kind of understood this kind of this culture and this community that are there. Um, so I started taking a lot more interest in the lifeguards. Then I went out with one ocean diving and I was educated about shark conservation and shark diving. And this kind of, this really started bringing it home to me. I was like, wow, everybody's, everybody's here. Everybody's on this seven mile strip on the North shore 
and they are all looking out for each other. They're looking out for nature. They're protecting each other. Um, even though I've got here, I've got, um, this is salty Chinese, uh, Kurt. Uh, he's just got his arm down. He actually took me out in a big wave at, at Waimea one day and threw me out in front of the wave and came to rescue me again. Um, I don't know if I thought it was a good idea or not, but you know, he, they were open to, they were open to sharing their story and they were open to sharing their story with me and they wanted to share their story with the rest of the world and how they, uh, how they save people's lives, which is really important. And they wanted to, they wanted to educate and they wanted to share their learning and they wanted to take it around the world and share it around the world. And that just got me, that really kind of, that really got me thinking um, of what we could do as storytellers, as what I could do as a storyteller. Um, now, I knew I couldn't tell all these stories on my own, uh, even though I gave it a good shot. Uh, I ended up with hundreds of thousands of pictures from this trip and lots of film. Um, I, it was, I had a library of images and film and it was on that time that I started building, I started building my site uh, which was ocean culture life. And the first thing to do was to connect storytellers, like-minded people um, like myself and the other people that I had met along the way. And these were going to be, these were going to be the first when I was, first when I was in Hawaii, I started to just, I just started chatting to people. I just started chatting to guys. So there was Ian Campbell. He was a world champion uh, bodyboarder um, in Hawaii. So I was speaking to him and I was trying to, and I, and I got his story and I found it really interesting. And I got him on the site. Um, and, and the lifeguards, there was, was, I got some lifeguards on the site and the other storytellers, the other story is the photographers. We've got, uh, we've got uh, Russell. I've got Russell Orb from Australia here. I connected. I connected with him soon after I'd been in Australia. Soon after I'd been in Hawaii. Um, with his wave pictures. Um, just lost track a little bit there. Uh, storytellers. I'm going to go back into storytellers. Okay. My the idea is I am a storyteller. I'm a photographer. I've never been good at explaining myself. But I'm a photographer and I've never been, I've always been one to explain how I see the world through my, through my work. And there are lots of other people out there that are doing the same thing. They use their work to, to express how they see the world and they share their work online. And it's these people that we're wanting to connect with now because not only are our storytellers sharing beautiful imagery, but they also have a connection with people that when they talk about the projects that they're working on, then people will get engaged to them as a person and they'll buy into them and they'll, and they'll buy into their personality and their work. But then they'll, they'll work as, um, as an ocean storyteller, uh, an ocean ambassador, um, will, Will connect and inspire others and inspire the next generation to to come forward and then share their imagery and then share their stories and it's this sharing stories that uh, that can connect with people and touch people's hearts and um, help to protect our change makers which is the next section I'll go on to um, ocean culture life is about uh, storytellers and it's about change makers um, the storytellers I've got a few storytellers on here that um, I will I'd like to talk about um, and there's many more on the site and I can share that link and we're continuing to build them now as we are all sitting at home at this moment it's, we're finding it easier to connect with people and these ocean storytellers are spending less time in the water uh, so we're able to get hold of them because normally they'll be spending every second of every day in the ocean. Um, Julia Wheeler, photographer, documentary filmmaker and certified travel addict. Uh, she is a, she's 
Um, Julia is an amazing photographer. She's been working on conservation projects and has uh, recently launched Wild Shots. So keep an eye on that. Um, Jono Allen is a wildlife photographer, environmental scientist and tour guide in Tonga. His work is incredible and he's educating, he's teaching people about, you know, how to dive with whales and how to capture them. And he's, t he's just passing on his knowledge and he's sharing. Uh, this giant guy, Jay Clue, he's a bit of a legend. Um, top, like top guy. It was actually when I first had a conversation with Jay about a year ago. And I heard a story and I was like, this guy is so cool. He's got such an amazing story. You know, he's, I don't know if you all know his story, but you can, you can read up on the story on our site. Um, I'm sure he spoke about it, spoken about it a lot on, um, on here, but he's got a background that is totally a hundred miles away from where, it, where he is now with, and being in the ocean, coming from the city. Now he's in the ocean and now he's, he's teaching people about, um, ecotourism and he's, and he's and he's getting people in and he's educating and he's looking after the fishermen in the local towns and he's just doing so many amazing things it's really inspirational the story is really inspirational um rob sorrenti um is an incredible uh, filmmaker uh, documentary filmmaker and over the last um few years he's been working with some ocean projects uh which include the 30 by 30 uh, which is an Ocean Unite project, and it is um, trying to protect the world's 30% of the world's oceans by uh, 2030. Um, and also the Kodiak Queen, uh, which is an amazing film. If you get a chance, you have to watch those films. Uh, they're really incredible. I am wary of the time, so we're going to like skip through. So our guardians, our guardians are. This is where us as we are storytellers, we can connect with our guardians and we can tell their story, but cap capture their story in a way that maybe they didn't have the ability to capture and share before, or maybe they didn't have the, you know, the, the funding to, to get a photographer on board or to get a filmmaker on board, but they're telling these amazing stories. Now, as we go to these places and we, and we capture personal projects, um, around the world or at home we will also have the ability to connect with the the guardians of people that are working on the ground uh, whether that's you or whether it's um somebody that you know uh these guardians are doing you know these are the people that are devoting their whole lives to looking after and protecting the ocean and its people and it is the this is how we can work together and how we can connect together and how we can inspire change together. Uh, a project that I've worked on uh, this winter with the Blue Marine Foundation in the Maldives. This was accumu accumu accumulation of a number of projects. Uh, we, I was only there for three days, but in those three days with the Blue Marine Foundation, it was at Six Senses Lamu. We were working on a seagrass project. We were working on reef conservation. We were working with Matt on the, on the Manta Trust um, team. And there was all this research and all these amazing people there. Um, so we had the opportunity to jump in, jump on board. Like under, I started getting an understanding of what was going on. Um, I'm not scientific in any means. Uh, I'm not technical in any means. I just know how to capture a story. Um, so being able to use the skills that I've, I've um, developed over the years, I'm able to go and tell some powerful stories of, uh, of these incredible change makers. Uh, uh, another project that we worked on whilst we were um, at with Blue Marine Foundation was the local uh, sustainable fishermen. Uh, the fishermen have signed up to the first reef fishing code of conduct in the Maldives. Uh, now this uh, was a project that they'd been working on for some time. I was fortunate that I got to go out with the, uh, with the reef fishermen and, uh, and capture some images that they could use. And when that was released um, to the world press, then they could use these images and they have gone up on sites and they've been out in the press. And these images have, uh, have gone everywhere about the, uh, about the story, about the code of conduct, which is uh, another really inspirational story 
um, working with some, working with a family, working with a fisherman, spending the whole day with them, two days with them. Um, this shot here, uh, this is actually a hand releasing the fish. I absolutely love that image because that's, that really kind of depicts the whole story just in that single image is releasing the undersized fish. I shouldn't know the name, I always do. I've just got a blank. Um, another project in the Maldives was uh, working with the Namuna Bar project. This is part of Suniva um, Fushi um, project in the Maldives. Uh, this is a different side of um, protecting the Maldives. There's two different on the on the left hand side of the screen here. You can see the um, you can see this is actually Trash Island in the Maldives. You hear a lot about it, but um, you know the, the Maldives are actually they're in this situation that you can see it because it, you, you can openly see it because there's just, it's a, there's no landmass there. So they have to like dump the rubbish somewhere. But what uh, Namuna Bar are doing is they're, they're educating the, all the islands and they're educating them how to like re recycle and reuse. So they're not producing so much waste. They're not so much waste is going to this, to this dumping ground. And also in the Maldives, there's a big, there's a big issue of them actually open burning on the small islands. So uh, what they're doing is they're getting the lo these, the boys down on the bottom right here, they are the local surfers. They're getting those, you know, those boys involved to go around and clean up the rubbish. And they're having it, it's almost like a competition. They're all getting involved. And, you know, the boys want to collect more rubbish, more uh, plastic bottles than the other ones, because it's, it's kind of a challenge. You know, everyone needs a challenge. But it's sad that it's got to this stage, but it has. And, uh, you know, with, with, um, with our team, we're able to go down and document them and, um, and, just, and just really, you know, we, we really enjoyed our time down there with the, with the gang, um, which was great. And the, and the, the bigger project and the main project why we're actually down there as well was uh, the president of the Maldives has actually stood up and he has said that he's going to ban single use plastics by 2023, uh, which is, uh, we, he'll be the first country in the world to do this. Um, it's a huge step for any country to say they're going to do that by reducing single-use plastics. They're reducing it down by 80%. Uh, you can find out more information on the site or on, on our site. Um, so this was actually on the island of Malos. This was the first island to introduce the um, Eco Central, which is stopping or burning on the beaches by um, reusing and recycling. This was really inspirational. It's getting the kids involved. We're out, we're having a lot of fun. You know, they, they brought the whole community together. Uh, the, the president was there, or President Nasheed was there. Uh, they had some, they had some um, people from all the neighboring islands. And then they were all working as a community and they were collaborating and they were bringing it all together. So it really kind of makes me, um, it really, it really touches my heart to be in this in this position to be working with these, with these um, charities and these and these people and these organisations. And you see the look in these kids' faces, you know, and it, and it is for them. It's you've got to you've got to act now. We've got to work on it now, and we've got to document this change and then share it and and use our work to inspire others. Whilst I was in the Maldives, of course, I got to get in the water and capture the beauty of the ocean, which is the stuff that, you know, we all love to share. And, um, and it's the stuff that, that kind of, that gets us to the ocean every, every opportunity that we can. Um, love spending time with turtles on the waves. They're super mellow on the waves. And uh, they're very relaxed. And um, also on this, on the shot there on the right, that's with the, uh, Blue Marine and Sixth Sense team just having an afternoon off and we were just all enjoying our time and diving underneath the waves and, and just having a giggle. So, you know, as much as we, as we work hard on location, um, we also, we do it because we love it. Ocean culture life starts at home. It certainly does. And I think now more than ever, um, all the work that we've been doing around the world as um, photographers and filmmakers and ocean scientists are, until we can get back on the on a plane and we can go go again it's really kind of taking note of what's happening at home now um we were working with sustainable fishermen in jersey and with the blue marine foundation um uh before all this happened this was last year uh, just really kind of getting their message across because of the because of the overfishing that was happening by the french and 
uh, other, you know, other projects. There was, you know, talk about dredging. It's so bad, but uh, these are <clears throat> these were um, locally dived scallops in Jersey, and also the local lobster fisherman here, Toby Great Catch. Such nice guys. Uh, this is an ocean culture project to go and document. Um, you know. The, these guys bring the food into our islands so we want to go and document them and we want to talk about what they are doing and we want to and by by having this bring this together then we can we can share their story um to to the public to the local public the local press take interest in it they want to get involved then people people start listening uh these are great stories uh the other side of it um this is a project, another project, a couple of projects in Jersey uh, that are really uh, close to our hearts. One is Healing Waves. These are an amazing group of um, individuals that are taking young children with uh, learning difficulties and just, um, yeah, just young children that haven't had a, the easiest start in life and with learning difficulties, and they are taking them surfing. And if you see the look on these kids' faces when they're surfing, it just, it just, brightens up your your year it's it's honestly it's the most amazing thing you can see they always say the ocean is therapy and it certainly is um you see it with children and uh, you see it with children that don't get the the um, possibility or the that aren't always gifted with the um possibility to get in the water so these stories are, are really powerful uh, and also down here we were we were working with some young children and we were going and picking up little modules of plastic and teaching them about the importance of the ocean, uh, which were, <clears throat> which is some more fun stories. Um, what is next with Ocean Culture Life? We are continuing to reach out uh, and tell stories. We're telling stories locally. We are, um, we're using uh, the 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 reach that we have with our with our storytellers to uh to connect we've even managed to get advertising up in times square for free of course um but we are we're, we're talking about it we want to get people involved we want to get um small communities involved we want to uh inspire change we want to inspire generations we want to get you know we want to we want to <clears throat> connect every time we go to a beautiful location in the world we want to go and find out what they're doing in their local area to clean up um protect their to protect their sharks to look after the children to teach um life saving and we just want to be able to, we want to be able to capture that we want to hear the people on the ground we want to hear these guardian stories and we want to bring them back we want to tell them and then we want to share them and we want to have them all under all in our community so we can all share and, and understand and, um, and inspire each other. <clears throat> Ocean Culture Life is a global community of filmmakers, photographers, and environmentalists whose lives have been shaped by the sea. Um, I think anybody watching this now will agree that we are all in this because we love the ocean. Um, we all um, are driven by our community we love to connect and we love to share our stories. Uh, if we can bring more people together uh, and if we can help share your stories, um, then, you know, then I think we're all, we're all doing amazing things. This isn't about doing anything on your own. It's about working with other people, connecting with other people. Charities should be connecting with each other to find out how best to do things. Um, and yeah, we, you know, if we can, if we can reach out to, reach out to our guardians and, and go to our local fishermen, get on the phone and say, Hey, listen, I want to come and tell your story. Then that's a, that's a start. I think every little, every little bit is, um, is a good, is a good um, step in the right direction at the moment. Uh, this is an image that was sent to me the other day by Julia Wheeler of sea lions. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Um, it says everything about the ocean to me. Um, this is community. Uh, the sea lions are looking out for each other and they protect each other and they share their experience with, with each other. Um, I absolutely love that image. Um, this is the positive story. This is 
Ocean, Co Ocean Culture Life will always share the positive stories. It will share the, to connect, because it's not about sharing the negative, it's about sharing the people that are making a difference. And it's to share the positive stories with the world. That is, that's our uh, main goal in this. And if we keep sharing positive imagery, um, we're going to connect, maybe not in such a hard hitting way, but that's, um, that's our ethos in this. <clears throat> um, coming to the end of this, as we hit the 30 minutes, um, collaboration is necessary to help steer environmental change. The ocean needs storytellers and we need you. Thank you very much. I hope that I have explained myself okay. Hi, Ellen. Hey, that was really, really awesome, Matt. Thank you so much for coming. Um, yeah, pleasure. I really love that idea of you know, using your photos to tell these stories, like these small stories, because we're so inundated with so much news all the time that it's hard to know what is real anymore and like this is what is real and we're so disconnected from these stories that like in these photos speak a thousand words in and of themselves you know let alone yeah. the story behind them so it's yeah, really so amazing to see your pictures and to see you bringing to life these really important stories especially like um the Maldives I know um I mean I used to live in Indonesia and you know, you see so many people pointing blame at the locals, like, how could you, you know, trash, yeah. you know, your home like this? And, mm. you know, they don't have the land mass that we have here in the U.S. We, we're not, you know, we just put our trash outside and it just disappears. Like there, it's just, there's nowhere for it to go. So Yeah, no, that's the problem. Yeah. yeah. I see, you kind of, it's easy to point the blame, isn't it? Yeah, it's so uh, easy. You point the blame at people, but we have got, yeah, you know, in the Maldives, they didn't have um, plastic until... 20 years ago so they didn't right. they would just burn their they would burn yeah. their waste on the beach it was normal but now there's plastic and now how do you get rid of it if it's yeah. you just can't so um yeah no it's uh it's good i just want to say this image is credited to jono allen this last one it's beautiful as well i absolutely love it cool cool well i've got a question in here for you um i've got a couple questions so um, we have a question from tom here hi matt uh fellow brit here uh, absolutely hey, stunning Tom. photos. Uh, can you talk about your gear and techniques specifically with the underwater shots? Cheers, dude. Yeah, so I use, um, hey Tom, thanks for the question, dude. Uh, so I use, um, I use a Canon underwater and I've got my, um, I've got my Nauticam housing, which is, um, I mean, I'm even using it in the waves now. It's not the easiest thing to use and I, I definitely don't like getting um, hit with it. But um, yeah, so I use a Nauticam housing. I used to use an SPL water housing with a 5D. But um, if you just want to shoot shallow, just go and get a, a splash housing, a kind of surf, surf, ho surf housing. It's a lot easier to use. Um, and also, like, I mean, just use GoPros for film as well. They're wicked, right? <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Um, so we've got another, quest um, another question from Christine. Um, so the photographer of the horse in the water was very touching. I rode in St. Lucia and the horses love the ocean there. So thank you for the photo of seeing it from underwater. What drove you to become so involved in this amazing journey of ocean storytellers? Um, what drove me to become so involved? The, the picture of the horse was, I don't actually know that picture of the horse, but that was, um, I think that's, I don't want to say who it is. I'm going to get it wrong. I'm going to, I'll find out and let you know who that is, but I'll share that with you after. Um, that uh, What drove me to become so involved in this amazing journey of ocean storytellers, I'm just really interested in people. Um, I, as a, as a photographer, as a storyteller, I'm interested in people. Uh, I'll always connect with people before I photograph them and I'll always get to learn. I always want to find out about their life. Um, and um, I want to find out about their journey. And with ocean culture, it just seemed to be a, a, a natural progression into connecting with ocean photographers and filmmakers and being able to share their story. Because I'm just really interested to hear people's stories. And I think people are interested to learn, you know, to, to equally um, hear people's stories and, uh, and learn from them and be inspired by them. So, um, yeah, it's, um, 
it was just it's just been a, a natural kind of progression for me to do this it just it felt natural for me to do it rather than just try and share every story on my own I just like to connect with people and community is very important so yeah that's uh that's that's been the journey oh awesome I've got another question here uh, how do you choose an area or place to go and work with um or the community to take pictures etc like how do you choose where you're going to go next well, I think that's the thing about uh, being an ocean photographer. You kind of, you do it so you can go to some pretty amazing places. Um, I, it comes from, you know, it comes from research, uh, research, connecting, um, being inspired by other photographers and seeing their work. And, and, then, um, and then I just reach out. Then I just reach out to people on the ground or I reach out to companies and um, just find out. Uh, I, I mean, I, I find out which companies are doing, have sustainable practice in a certain area. So I'll reach out to them and I will share my portfolio and then we'll connect. And then I can go and I can go and have my, I can go and create a body of personal work whilst I'm there, but I can also work with the, with the charities organizations and I can help tell their story. So I would just, it's always, it's the answer to the question really is just be inspired by other photographers and reach out and connect. Yeah. And from personal experience, there's a lot of networking too. Like you meet someone on a boat or something and they're like, oh man, you know, this, I like when I was in Fiji, there was this super cool project going on. Like, oh man, you should check it out. And then you research it and you're like, oh, this is super cool. And then you plan a trip. So it's a yeah. lot of talking to other people about their experiences and stuff. Absolutely right. I mean, it's, it's part of travel, isn't it? You just, you you just connect with people and, and you talk to people. I know we're, we're having to do this now, but before that, yeah. you'll, go, you'll go somewhere and then you meet like-minded people that are from all around the world and you stay connected with them. And then next time you go to the other side of the world, you can go and hang out with them or meet their friends. So yeah. it's all about, it's, it's always been about collaboration and just talking to people and just getting on with people. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And yeah. even, I mean, even now we can still kind of figure out a way to use the online platforms to connect. Like if anybody in the audience wants to, um, like, you know, if they're thinking about a place and they want to know about different conservation groups or um, uh, companies that are working in that area, um, you know, you're thinking about somewhere to go, you can always message me, Matt, like um, Dive Ninjas, any of the speakers that have talked before, shoot them a message on um, social media. And, you know, I'm sure they would be happy to get back to you oh, yeah. um, about recommendations and stuff for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone's so open. I mean, you know, everyone's so open in the, in, in this, in this world of, of, yeah. um, well, of, you know, of oceans and photographers. If you, if you reach out to people, then, you know, generally people to get back because, you know, everyone's interested in each other. So it's, it's nice, you know, stuff that Dive Ninja is doing. And I was, I was hoping to be out with you guys this April, but, you know, this is kind of fed a hold of all that, you know, diving with those modular rays. The modular rays are just on their own right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, you know, I'd love to, have, I'd love to have done that. Uh, you know, that's this, this conversation is, you know, it's built for a while with Jay and it's great to see what you guys are doing. You're just doing so, so many amazing things and, and, uh, and that's really inspiring. Uh, but uh, let's keep let's keep connecting with everyone, right? Yeah. Oh, we just had um, another question come in. Um, so it's amazing to see the positive stories about the ocean when we are inundated with negative stories with regards to pollution and the climate crisis. Do you have any ideas how any ideas of how we can spread these positive stories to youth and adults around the world? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question, and it's something that we are. All um, that we're all dealt every day. Uh, the news gives us negative news all the time. You know, we're just we're filled with negativity all the time. Um, if you post something negative on on um, social media, it's probably gonna it's gonna get a quicker hit rate than anything else. But the truth is, if you start sharing positive stories and you start telling these positive stories, and you have to probably you have to put more time into it and more effort into it. But what you're doing is you're actually, you're, you're giving people, um, you're giving people the answer to get out of it. You're not telling people what the issue is. You're just giving people the answer on how to get out of this situation. So by giving the answer and by sharing the answer, it's like people want like, ah, oh, okay, we can get on board with this. Uh, there's something that we can do something. If you see, 
um, like if you see a, a, a trash island or a, you know the floating trash out in the Pacific, how can you ever like where do you even begin to comprehend how you could possibly change that? But if you see some um, if you see some stories of some locals on the beach helping uh, the community, or if you just see a positive story about looking after um, the whales or uh, shark conservation, and then you can find out a way to get involved and the way to go, if you're gonna go and tell the story or if you wanna go and just work, just go and pay to be with the scientists or go on an eco-tourism trip, um, that's, your, that's your, your little bit to help out and, and, um, and be involved and, and, and feel good because you've, you've done something good that can, that can make a difference, even if it's a small difference, any difference is good. Um, if everybody lived by that, then the world would be a better place. But um, just keep, you know, just keep sharing the positivity. Um, you can, you can, you know, there's there's always a way to. You you can always talk about um, the reason why, um, and also you know this is this is where it was, and then this is where it is now. But um, the idea of that real negativity is just we we we've, we've been seeing too much of that for too long, and we're still seeing too much of it. Um, don't watch the news it's bad <laughs> I agree I agree and, and one thing that we can do is um, I think sometimes we forget is that we have control over what we can see like what's in our Facebook feeds what's in our Instagram like who we're following who we're supporting mm. um, like so you know if you're following positive stories like um, ocean Coach culture life or um, there's some like little news clips that share stories um, out in the world, like Upworthy or big short stories. Um, mm. They, if you're constantly kind of surrounding yourself with that kind of positivity, that can really make a difference in your day. Even like when you're instead of scrolling through just like constant negative stuff, yeah. this is, leaves you hopeless at the end of it. You know, if you're scrolling through something inspiring, it like changes your perspective for the whole day. And so, just like going and unfollowing all these people that are not <laughs> making you feel great at the end of the day, and following things like Ocean Culture Life, I mean, just so much of that is um, making a difference and telling real, real stories. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, get rid of it. Delete all the negative. Also, <laughs> also with the way the algorithm works on Facebook and Instagram, if you start looking at negative stuff, you're going to keep seeing it. Yeah. So it's better to be looking at positive because then positive is always going to be coming up and then you'll have a much better day every day. Don't yeah. look at the negative because it's, you know, um, social media will keep sharing negative with you. Yeah. I think we forget we have control over that. <laughs> oh, I don't. Yeah, I don't think we do. Oh, we know we do. We do, <laughs> no, but we like, don't. <laughs> who we follow and stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Matt. Um, I think yes. we're out of questions, but if you guys think of any other questions for Matt, um, please direct them to our social media or Matt's social media. Um, he's got a link down there that you can see. Um, but otherwise, stay up to date on the Ocean Stories um, schedule, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks again. Thank you very much, Ellen and Jay and Dive Ninjas. You're superstars. It's been so nice being involved. Thank you awesome. very much. Thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you soon, yeah? Yeah, hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take care. All the best. Ciao.